Hello everybody. The smear campaign against me didn't stop on Christmas Day. However, it is becoming clear that thousands of people are behind me. By now, almost 5,000 people have signed a petition expressing their disgust with the Islington Council's decision against me. We are winning this essential battle for freedom. I don't know whether you have noticed, despite the orchestrated slander campaign against me, not one has produced a single racist or hateful quote by me. I personally challenge those who called me racist and a Holocaust denier to present a single reference by me where I criticize Jews as a people, as ethnicity, as race, as a biology. I challenge them to point at a single reference where I criticize anyone as such. I ask them to come with the evidence to show where do I deny the Holocaust actually. Guess what? No one came back. The meaning of it is that in Britain 2018, you can be accused of hate crime by the press even without having a single crime, let alone an aid crime, attached to your name. The Guardian, however, made an attempt to produce the evidence of my uh, most controversial quotes. They quoted me genuinely, but let me assure you, I actually own each of these quotes with pride. These are my opinions and I substantiate them in my writing. The Guardian writes, Atzmon has previously accused Jews of exploiting the Holocaust and distanced himself from his Jewish heritage. All right, this is not a quote, but this is true. But I'm not really alone. Uh, I'm sure that some of my readers are aware of uh, Norman Finkelstein's uh, The Holocaust uh, Industry. I'm sure that some of you are aware of the fact that it was Abba Eben, the um, legendary Israeli diplomat who in the 50s coined the famous there is no business like Shoah business. Abba Eben and Norman Finkelstein cannot play saxophone in Islington. Good? In a 2003 essay, E. Atzmon, me, wrote, we, and this is a quote, we must begin to take the accusation that Zionists are trying to control the world very seriously. Surely I should receive an award for saying that. Three years before Mersheimer and Walt published their um, bestseller on the Israeli lobby, many years before Bibi Netanyahu spat in Obama administration's face, giving a sermon to the joint us in America, and I suggest the Brits who listen to me here, and I am sure that you are quite a few, Go and check how many of your MPs are members of uh, Israeli friends clubs. In another article, he denounced the Holocaust religion. He said, Holocaust denial laws should be reconsidered. This is a quote. Holocaust denial laws should be reconsidered. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do believe that history should be subject to open discussion. And guess what? I'm not alone. Deborah, Deborah Lipstadt, the, again, legendary Jewish historian and uh, probably the biggest enemy of Holocaust denial, as she calls it, 
also opposes Holocaust denial laws. I'm, by the way, against all history laws. I believe that slavery, Irish famine, the Holodomo, the Nakba, and the Holocaust, everything that happened in the past should be discussed freely. We are back with The Guardian. Atzmon, The Guardian reports, has suggested attacks on synagogues should be considered political, political act rather than aid crime. And this is the quote. I'm here to announce as loudly as I can, there is no anti-Semitism anymore, he wrote. In the devastating reality created by the Jewish state, anti-Semitism has been replaced by political reaction. Now, I do accept that some may not like what I'm saying here, but this is what I believe. I don't believe that like in the 30s, people hate Jews because of their genes. It may happen in some corner of society, but a lot of the opposition that we see to Jewish politics, to Jewish institutions, to Jewish uh, uh, political bodies, to Israeli lobbying and so on and so on, are political reactions. I'm not saying, this is a quote, I'm not saying that synagogues aren't being attacked, the Jewish graves are not brutally smashed up, I'm saying that these acts are in no way legitimate, should be seen as political responses rather than racially motivated acts or irrational hate crimes. Now, is this a hateful statement? Not at all. Is this a call for violence or an incitement of violence? Not at all. It's quite the opposite. Why are some people so upset by this statement? Maybe because it actually searches for rationality, reason, cause and effect, where others insist to impose their views that hatred is always irrational. And this is something that we see a lot in the Western left discourse. We always use the word phobia. Islamophobia, Judeophobia, transphobia, gayphobia. Once we castigate a thing as a phobia, we don't have to look into it because it is irrational. I suggest that we do the complete opposite. We try to understand. We try to understand where hatred is coming from. We try to trace its rationality, not to justify it. We try to trace the rationality in order to tackle it. I actually insist that rationality, the search for reason, is that which we have lost in our public debate. We are navigating through minefields that are imposed on us by authoritarian forces, imposing on us a tyranny of correctness. I think that this is the most important war for us to fight. We have to reinstate our elementary freedoms to say what we think, to say what we believe to be true. We have the right to be mistaken. We have the right to be corrected. Silencing, witch hunt, is not the answer. It is just a path towards darkness. That's all for today. I'll meet you again in a few days with more details into this battle. Thank you so much for following me and stay tuned and we will win. Thank you so much.